Welcome to Remix Online Training. This video will cover the Title VI Service Equity Analysis portion of Remix. Understanding how to use the Remix Title VI engine requires at least a basic understanding of the FTA Title VI circular with respect to service equity analyses. The goal of this feature is to quickly provide you data to determine if a proposed service change would be a disproportionate impact to the low-income or minority populations of your service area. We built this feature to encourage agencies to undertake this analysis earlier in the planning process. To set the context of how you would use the Title VI engine, we'll presume you are trying to evaluate a service change in terms of frequency of service or where service is provided. In Remix, you can represent this change with two different Remix maps, one with the current service and one representing the proposed change. What Remix's Title VI engine does is compare those two maps in terms of the change in quantity of transit service for all, low income, and minority populations within a quarter mile of the transit lines affected on your map. Before we get started though, just to note, the Title VI engine is not set up for your agency automatically. You'll need to work with your team's customer success manager to turn on this feature. He or she will ask you a couple of questions that are required as inputs to ensure the Title VI engine is set up correctly for your agency. Once it's set up, you'll notice a small Title VI button on the left toolbar. Click it and you'll see that you have an option to select two Remix maps. Let me show you an example right now. So here I am in my Remix map. You'll notice that I've traveled to Oakland, California, and this map is actually called Before Map because in this example, I've selected a few lines to represent my existing service. As I've set up with my Customer Success Manager, I've provided a couple of inputs that are required to set up Title VI correctly for my agency. You'll see here at the bottom left, there's a small button that says 6, standing for Title VI. Because it's set up for my agency, it appears, and if I click on it, you'll notice that I have a couple of options. And you'll see that I have two maps selected here, one under the heading Existing and one under the heading Proposed. To get started, I actually want to take these two maps that I've already created and make sure that they're the right ones. So under Existing, and it says After Map. Well, this is actually the name of my map, and that's actually the incorrect map. So what I'm going to do is simply click on this box, and you'll see that Remix pulls up a list of all of my maps. So for existing service, I'm going to select my map called Before Map, which is actually the map that's on my screen right now. And then in the proposed, you'll have to take my word that I've created another map called After Map. And I'll select that here. And so as I mentioned before, Remix's Title VI engine compares two maps. To describe, my Before Map includes a couple of Remix lines here in Oakland, California. And my after map includes similar lines, but I've made a couple of changes, and I'll show you what changes I've made using the Title VI output. When I'm confident about the maps that I've selected, I'll hit Run Analysis. In a few moments, I'll receive an email in my inbox, which has a few files that I can open up to view my analysis. I've gone ahead and opened up that file just to speed things up a little bit. So if I go over to one of the four files, here's the one called Low Income. You'll see the colored block groups here on my map, these represent the AC Transit service area, and these were defined by AC Transit and given to Remix so we could include as part of the report. The different colors mean whether a block group is above the average in terms of low income percentage or below the average. So here, block groups shown in red represent block groups that were found to be above the average percent low income across the entire service area. The block groups in blue represent block groups that were below the low income average across the service area. This is similar for the second image. The minority.png file includes block groups across the service area. Block groups in red indicate block groups that are above the average in terms of minority percentage across the service area. And the block groups in gray indicate those that are below the average. The third image is one called trip difference. This one's interesting because it actually is intended to represent where our service quantity increased or where it decreased across the service area. So you'll see more when I open up the Title VI report, but in the middle you'll see a dark red line. As comparing my two maps, that is the area where I actually eliminated a service. Areas in yellow represent areas that might have neutral or not much change, and areas in green are areas that received additional service comparing against my two maps. So of the four files, the fourth is an Excel file called Title VI Analysis. This is where you'll find the meat of the information as part of your service comparison using the Remix Title VI engine. This file has four different tabs, README, Title VI Analysis, Census Block Groups, and Service Area. Let me talk about the README tab first. There's some information here that I won't read aloud to you, but I think the most important two things here include, one, 
links to the maps that you use to compare your before and after. So in the future, if you have this file, you can always click here to go back to the original map that you were using for the before map and the original map you were using for the after map. We also show some of the assumptions that we've used as part of this Title VI analysis. In this particular example, low income, as defined by uh, the transit agency here, is 200% of the census-defined poverty rate. This is a variable that your customer success manager will ask of you when setting up the Title VI engine. The next tab that I'll want to talk through is service area. One of the inputs as part of the Title VI engine is understanding your service area, which in terms of Remix's perspective, is a set of block groups which represents a specific area. This is showing the block groups that are part of AC Transit service area. As part of those 1,076 block groups, that composes about 1.5 million people. And here are the averages across that service area. So about 30.7% are considered to be low income, and 71.3% are considered to be minority. So keep those numbers in mind as we go through the rest of this analysis. And last but not least, as part of this Title VI analysis, trips before and trips after represent the quantity of service. So if I'm looking at this service change holistically, it looks like we have additional trips before versus after. So effectively, this is a service reduction. And to quantify this, uh, trips before means potential transit trips that could be taken. This is not the same as ridership. The next tab that I'd like to walk you through is the Census Block Groups tab. In this tab, you'll notice that we have a list of every census block group as part of the AC Transit service area. And listing next to that block group is the population and the percentage of that population which are considered to be low income or in minority status. This can be a really effective piece of information if you're doing any kind of demographic analysis across your service area. In addition, we also list out trips before and trips after. And what this effectively means is that each block group, given the lines on my map, how many trips did that block group receive before my service change and after my service change? So to give an example, using this block group here, which I'll highlight in Excel, you'll see that this has about 1,500 people living in. This is the percentage of low income and minority status in that block group. And it looks like before there was no service burning to this particular block group. And after, across the entire year, there's about 21,810 opportunities to take the bus, which means that a bus passed by or passed through this block group at least this many times. Looking at the Title VI Analysis tab, this is where you're going to get into the meat of the data with respect to your Title VI Service Equity Analysis. To give you a quick overview, you'll first see that in column A, there's a list of routes. These are the routes that were on your maps either before or after. You won't see your full listing of routes unless that all of those routes are listed on your map as well. So let me give you a couple of quick examples. So first, let's take a look at route number one, San Leandro BART to downtown Oakland. What Remix will show in both directions is the population within a quarter mile of the stops of that route, and the percentage of that population who are considered to be low income or within minority status. Now this part's important. As I mentioned before, Remix wants to evaluate the quantity of service provided and the potential change. So in this particular column, we show trips this is not necessarily ridership, but what it's intended to reflect is the quantity of service. So this is variable based on the frequency of service and the service span. So one way you could think about this is that Route 1, the San Leandro Bar to downtown Oakland, if you were living on that route, you had 42,000 opportunities to take the bus across the year in the inbound direction. Let me say that one more time. So here's the population. And if you are within a quarter mile of the route, there were 42,000 opportunities to ride the bus based on the service span and the quantity of service. We do the same analysis on the outbound direction. So we are again looking at the outbound line. People within the bus stop, within a quarter mile, low income and minority status, and then the potential trips. And we do this across all of the routes. So this is a good way to take a service snapshot of all of the routes as part of my before map in the inbound and outbound direction. Now let me go under the blue columns here, which are shown as after. We run the same analysis. So here, you'll notice that we have similar headers. But under route one, you'll see that the population is zero. Zero trips annually in both directions. What this reflects is a service cut. So between my before and then to my after, you'll see that we must have cut route one as part of my service equity plan or my service change. 
On the flip side, let's go to Route 22 here at the bottom. You'll see that as part of my before map, the population is actually listed as zero. And then in my after map, you'll see that population and number of trips are actually included here. This means that the Route 22 must have been added as part of my after scenario. And within that addition, 34,926 people lived within a quarter mile of this line. And then this is the quantity of service. Now, I know there's some summary information here at the bottom, but let me keep going to the right. So what's important here is the difference. And I'm going to introduce this concept of people trips. So as part of the service equity analysis, one of the things that was important for us to represent is changes to the quantity of service. So not just eliminating a line or adding a line, but also changing the frequency of a line has an impact on who is served by it. And so here you'll notice that if I click on how this 5,878,261,415 is calculated, you can always jump into the Title VI worksheet and actually see the calculations itself. But effectively, what we are trying to do is multiplying the population by the number of trips as a way to get a general index of how much service increased or how much did it decrease. And we do this across all population, the low-income population, and the minority population. So by looking at this set of numbers by itself, I can tell that Route 1 had a fairly significant impact in terms of a service reduction. Route 22 had a less significant uh, but increase of an impact. So 764 million people trips as compared to the losing of 5 billion. And Route 7 had a small impact. And I know for a fact that in my situation with Route 7, I simply added frequency. So I didn't change the line itself, but I added frequency to the service. I think I made it from every 30 minutes to every 20 minutes, and that's why there's an addition of service. So looking at the bottom line, you'll see that with my service changes, a line addition, a line subtraction, and an increase in frequency, I still come out at a negative number, which represents that in total across these different line changes, I'm still reducing service in whole. Now this is important, and when you're evaluating the Title VI engine, you'll want to know if you are either adding or reducing service in total. And with that information, I'm going to take a look at my summary box here in the bottom. So earlier, I asked you to remember these percentages, 30.7 and 71.3. If you remember, these are actually the same percentages that you saw here in the service area. So these, again, are just the average across the entire service area. And those numbers, again, are represented here because I want to use those numbers as a way to compare this particular service change against the average. And what Remix is telling me here is that the change borne by the low-income population is actually quite higher than the average. So in this particular service change, the service cuts that I have made in total affected 62% of low-income population within my service area, whereas the area average is 30.7%. So in summary, the low-income population took a disproportionate burden of this service cut relative to what the average might be by a factor of 31%. In a similar vein, this particular service change the minority population that was impacted by this is, again, much higher than the average by a factor or by a margin of 21.6%. So to recap, I knew that I had a service cut. And with the service cut, I want to make sure that my low-income and minority populations don't take a disproportionate burden of that service cut relative to my average. And using this situation, it looks like my average is, in fact, lower than the, the disproportionate burden that is placed on the low-income and minority population. Now let's take an alternative example. Had this been a service increase and we were adding service uh, in total, having these percentages might be okay because it means that my low income and minority populations actually received a greater proportion of that benefit as compared to the average. To summarize, the Remix Title VI engine is intended to very quickly provide you information about your low income and minority populations when comparing two different services in Remix. A couple of key questions you can ask yourself after running this analysis. First, did my service increase or decrease? Second, did my service change have a disproportionate impact on the low-income or minority populations relative to my system average? Again, I think this is a key point in what we're showing on the screen. Did my service change have a disproportionate impact on the low-income or minority population relative to the system average shown here on the screen? And third, 
You'll have to compare this information to what are any local thresholds that you might have at your transit agency to what constitutes a disproportionate impact. So this concludes the Title VI overview. If you have additional questions, please visit our help site at help.remix.com or contact your customer success manager for more information, and we'd be happy to help.